No, no, it's going to be just like the practice exam was. So maybe six or seven, though. Four or five. How many were on that practice exam? Something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. It's like seven. There's one earlier. So, uh, like eight. I think about eight. So one third. One third of the exam is word problems. So let's give it a try. Uh, starting with number 18 up there. Let's we'll start with number 18. See what you can do. I'll finish it up in just a second. <coughs> so the 51,000 wasn't there. The 51,000 answer wasn't there. So we choose the E. With great confidence and no shakiness, right? We're like, I know it's E. <laughs> yeah, okay, we good? So shall we? Questions on that one? Um, someone took consecutive integers, negative 233. Find the larger integer. Okay, try number 20. Try number 20. So find the larger. All right, the sum of two consecutive integers is negative 233. Find the larger. Find the larger. Okay, so what do we do for... Now, does it say consecutive odd or even or just consecutive? Just consecutive. So I'm going to use x and x plus 1, right? What if, what if it had said odd, consecutive odd integers? Yeah, x, x plus 2. Go up by 2. If I needed another one, I'd go x plus 4. You know, you go up by 2. Because odd numbers jump by 2 every time, don't they? 17, 19, 21 just jumps by 2 every time. But if they don't say odd, they just say consecutive. They just mean going up by 1 every time. Like 17, 18, 19. Just going up by 1 every time. So two of them. There they are. There's our two players. Look at that. One of them is playing x. See how this is always the case in word problems? One of the two players in the game is plain, simple x. All right. What are we supposed to do with them? Sum. What does sum mean? Add them up, and it is, equals, is, negative 233. Good so far. Now, you know what the deal is. X and L won't be alone, so two X's on the same side, like terms. 2X plus 1 is negative 233. Okay, how do you get X alone? Subtract 1. So, 2X equals, now what's that? If you, if you lose $233 and then you lose another dollar, it was a bad day. It's $234. Maybe it's a fun day. Maybe you spend it on recreation. All right. Do anyway, you lost $234. Whatever. Good to there so far? So it adds to be a bigger negative, though, is my point, right? Okay. So now, last step is always divide by 2. 
Um, and you get something minus 117. But be careful. That's the first one. What's the second one? What are the two players? One of them's X. What's the other one? X add one. If you add one to that, you get minus 116. Which one of those is larger? Which one's a better financial situation? The larger. The second one, right? Because you added one. It's bigger. Minus 116. That's the larger one. So I don't know what option that was. That was up there, though, wasn't it? But they also put the minus 117, didn't they? It's dastardly. These publisher test bank things. They're trying to bait the hook and sucker you in. Does that make sense, then, if they do that on today's test? I don't even know what's on today's test. Hopefully that one right there. Hopefully that exact one. <laughs> <laughs> Any version thereof you can handle, right? Does that make sense? Questions I can answer on that? So just get them both at the end, x and x plus 1. Grab the larger. All right, let's keep moving. Number 21. First and third of three consecutive odd integers. All right, there's only 57 less than five times a second integer. Find the third. <laughs> that's just, that's just as tricky. Yeah, yeah. mean and unfair. That's yeah, that's right. We're just protecting ourselves. Say so first and third of three. This is a rough one, huh? So first thing you got to do is identify the three consecutive odd integers. I hope that's easy for you now. Just write them over here on the side. First, second, third. What's the first? What's the first in every word problem? X. I'll get you started. There we go. Right? And then what are the other two? Is it say consecutive? Just consecutive? Or does it say consecutive odd? <laughs> consecutive odd. Consecutive odd. So I'll give you some time on the formulas. So, um, so it's x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. Remember? Now, now you might say, wait a minute, sir, those are even numbers. We're talking about the jump, not the numbers themselves. Right? Take, take, take some even numbers. Look at this. Like 17, 19, 21. What's the jump from 17 to 19? 2. What's the jump from 17 to 21? 4. It's the jump we're talking about. When you write these formulas, that indicates the jump, not the numbers themselves. Right? X is the first number. It's your, your starting point. From there, you jump to and you jump for to get to the next odd numbers. Right? So that's why we always add two more for odd. Right? If they just say consecutive, you only go add one, add two, add three. They only go up by one every time. If they say consecutive odd, you add two, add four, add six. Right? Because the jump from odd number to odd number is always a jump of two, isn't it? So there's your setup, right? Is that good? How are we doing? We getting it from there? Yeah. Want a little more time? Let me give you, I think some people need a little bit more. Five times a second. So five times... The second. 
Does that make sense? Why, why can't I just write, why, do I, why can't I just write 5x plus 2? Why do I do the parentheses? Where'd those come from? That would, be, that would be five times just part of the second. I didn't multiply the whole second. The whole second is x plus 2. That's what it says right here. Whoops, I just erased it. <laughs> the second is x plus 2. So you've got to multiply the whole second, right? The whole x plus 2 by the 5, not just the front part. That good? Does that make sense? Just keep practicing that. All right. So now we can solve it. x and x is 2x. Distribute the 5, 5x five plus 10, good like that. I'll let you, fin can you finish it from there? Let's go ahead and get all the way to the final answer from there. I have to go back to the question for you. Doing, we're doing good. You ready for me to finish it? Go back, finish her up. All right, let's take a look. So, um, how do we solve this equation now? I guess I could combine like terms, huh? Right here, these are numbers. It's minus 47. We get to there? 10 minus 57 is minus 47. So, what do we do now to solve for x? Yeah, x is on opposite sides. What do we always do? Yeah, usually we get rid of the lower one, huh? So let's get rid of the lower one. Boom. So we get 4 equals 3x minus 47. Good to there so far. And then x is saying I want to be alone. So we add 47 to both sides. What do we get over here? Is this 51? I'll bring it over here. 51 is 3x. Right? Isn't that good? Divide by 3. So it is. X is 17. 17. And so we go back. Do they give me an answer of, what number is that? 21. 17. 17. There it is. D. Yeah, right. They're baiting the hook. And they're saying, bite, bite, baby, bite. And you're a caught fish. After all that good work, wouldn't it be a bummer, after all that good work, to bite the baited hook and be pulled right out of the water? In recopying the problem, I put a negative in front of the five. I had everything else right, uh, it's totally One little, yeah, it I does. I set it up wrong, but I had the same answer as the way you set it up. Okay. Oh. Hmm, I can look at that later. So, does that make sense? It's not D, though, right? What, why is it not D? <laughs> yeah, because they said find the largest. They're being really tricky on this one, aren't they? Let's go back. What, what, what do they actually want? So you always got to watch out what they want and find the third integer. Yeah, X is 17. Yeah, they're, they're making you be on your toes. You know what they're making you do? Read. Read super careful. Yeah, really, math word problems make you a good reader. If you spend enough time working on math word problems, you'll be a precise reader. Excellent training to be a lawyer, right? What do lawyers do? They read contracts and they write them very precise, right? The math word problems make you be exact according to what those words say. 
find the third integer. They want the third integer, which is what? X plus 4. That's why it's so important you write down first, second, third. We've been using that a lot over there, haven't we? So I really encourage you to write down the first, second, third and use that all the way through. Third, so it's X plus 4. So I've got to plug in the X there. 17 add 4. <coughs> 21 is the answer. Whatever that was, I don't know. Was that E or was that one of the ones there? C. C? Is that C? Okay. On that. Good questions on that one? Is that okay? Shall we move on? we got... Uh, like 12 minutes of the test. we got to get some more of these done. Let's go to 22, huh? Payphone? Quarters and dimes? Try 22. Go for a second back over. What's the formula? That, what kind of word problem is this? Money. Money. What, what formula do we use on the money ones? Value. The value or money, yeah. Dollar X plus dollar total number minus X is total dollars, right? On any money. So you have that in your 3x5 card, I hope. That's the golden ticket right there. That formula, right? It's the one we've been using. So if you don't have it on your 3 by 5 card, be good to put it on there. So I'll flash back to the problem if that's okay. Everybody good to there? All three people forget that X. So it's the first. So I'm going to put quarters, but you can put dimes. It doesn't matter. Remember, the order is switchable. I'm just going to go the order they came in the sentence. It doesn't matter. You can put point ten, But I'll put point twenty five X, though. If you put point ten, that's fine. X, though. Not just a point twenty five alone or a point ten alone. Right? That X is part of the formula. It's super important. Like that? And if you, again, if you switch the, if you have the point 10 coming first, then the point 25, you're crazy. No, 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 that's totally fine. It's totally fine. It'll work out just fine. <laughs> the order doesn't matter, but you, you are crazy if you don't have the X. You're not crazy, but you're going to get it wrong if you don't have the X. That X is important. It's important. All right, solve it from there. And, and when you're done with, and you got X, you want to know whether that's dimes or quarters. Well, how do you know? At least if you set it up like I did, I put the X next to 0.25, so my answer for X will be quarters. If you happen to put the 0.10 first, then your answer, you'll first get the dime total, and then you can go back and get the, we can, we'll both be able to get the other one by plugging in the 72 is the total, right? So just subtract from 72. That makes sense. So solve it from there. I better jump in. All right, so it's 0.25x, distribute 7.2 minus uh, 0.10x is 1110. We good to there? All right, good, good, good. Now, 0.25x minus 0.10x, what does that do? 0.15x. Right? Combine like terms there. And now X is saying, I'm sorry, just combine these two, right? 0.25 minus 0.10 is 0.15. X saying I won't be alone, so subtract 7.2. What is that? 4, no, 3.9? 
Divide. Last step is divide. Last step is always divide by the identical twin. 0.15. X equals, what is that? 26. Again, I happen to start with it next to the 0.25, so that's quarters. Right? How do you find that? The total, 72 coins total. So just subtract from the total, huh? 72 minus 26, what is that? 46 times. 46 times. So whatever answer that was on the multiple choice. Is that good on that? You're going to be able to do that here in 10 minutes? 5 minutes? Okay, questions I can answer on that one? I was just having trouble because oh, yeah. I had copied the formula down wrong. So oh. Like, you have your 3x5 card now, right? Yeah. Everybody's got this thing right here on their 3x5 card. Yeah, I had my total, total plus X. Oh, X. that matters. Yeah. <coughs> Right. I'll do the same thing. I'll just check around and go, oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. You know, no, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, then we can have a survey on the screen. Answer three, 80% say it's B. All right. Um, all right, let's try number 23. How would you get the answer on 23? It came out to 26. It came out to... 26 quarters and 46 times. 26 quarters? Uh oh. 46 times? Hold on. So I got my, yeah, you always subtract from the total because they said there's 72 coins total. Yeah, so once you get one answer, and I knew that was quarters because I had put x next to 0.25. So you would have, so if you put 0.10 right there, you would have known it was dimes. You would have got dimes at first, and then you just subtract from the total and you'd get the quarters. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well. All right, so let's try the walnut problem. How many pounds of walnuts to sell for 480 per pound must be, and there's the key word to the whole problem, mixed. So although this problem has money, like the last one had money, it's not really a money problem. It's a mixture problem. Three beakers. So is everybody seeing that? How you know something is a mixture problem is it literally says the word mix somewhere. Even though it's got money, it's really a mixture because they're mixing them. Whereas the last one had money, but they were never mixing them. They never said, I'm taking the quarters and dimes and I'm making some new kind of coin out of them. No, we never mixed the quarters and dimes. But here we're making some new kind of bag of nuts. Right? Out of a mix. So remember how these work with the three beakers, right? Got the or three buckets or whatever. Remember those? Whenever you got a mixture problem, right? It's the three beakers, three buckets.
So remember, you put the we put the money at the bottom, right? So we have four eighty, four ninety four, and the mixture four eighty five. Good, you remember all that? What other number are they giving us? Five pounds. Five pounds of the of the it says five pounds of the four ninety four stuff. The cashews. Right? And then what do we put in here and what do we put there? X, always oh, somebody's playing X, huh? And these add X plus five. Great. Now, how do we get our equation? Multiply. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, right? So 480x, 494 times 5, 485 times x plus 5. Like so. Let's multiply top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Then we solve that equation. Or the x. Twenty-four point seven. Thank you. And this distributes. What is it? 24 and a quarter. 24 and a quarter. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we're to here now. Good to there. X is saying I want to be low. What do we do with X's on opposite sides of the wall? Get rid of the lower one. Who's the lower one? The 4.80X is lower than the 485, huh? All right, this guy is lower than, they're both X's. We have X's on opposite sides. The lower one is the 4.80, huh? Subtract them, gonzo. So what do we have? 24.7, oops, these don't subtract, whoops. <laughs> they subtract, I mean, it's, is it 0.05X? Plus 24.25? So... We get to there. X is saying, I want to be alone. So what do we do to get X alone? Minus 24.25. Gonzo. Kind of running out of room. Come up, come up here, maybe. And um, finish it up. So what is that going to be? Subtract these... And is that five. point four four five? Four, five? Yeah, four five. And this is point oh five x because these canceled. All you have is point oh five x. All right. Last step is always divide. So point four five divided by point oh five is nine. So x is nine. Nine pounds of walnuts. 
Well, how's that? Questions on that? Are we good? You feeling good? Can you do those? Most of them? So we just covered the word problems again. So I'm hoping that helps. All right, well, we better take this thing and call it a day. So the homework is 4 1 and 4 2. That'll be the homework. Homework for Tuesday. Graphing should be pretty easy.